<laughs> Welcome back to the geek to geek podcast where we have been harding our kingdom all week long and I, I am here with Austin once again uh, because uh, Void is still working on his uh, his wonderful life and we will hopefully be back with him in a week or so and today Austin has been playing Kingdom Hearts 3 a lot this week uh, just like I have and so we figure that this is a good opportunity to really uh, dive into the series uh, since he has actually played every single one of them, I think. And uh, he and I are actually approaching Kingdom Hearts 3 from completely opposite angles, it turns out. So, um, so start out with, what do you think about the Kingdom Hearts series? Like, you've played all of them, and I didn't realize it was multiple times. Your notes say that you've played through them multiple times each. I, well, okay, I've played through all of them multiple times. Except for Chain of Memories, I've yeah. never played gotten very far in Chain of Memories. I don't like the card battle system, and I played it on the PS2. It was the first time I ever played it, and didn't like it. And then I played the remastered one on PS4, it and got didn't. a bit further, but it still just never clicked for me, so I didn't like it. And then Recoded, I never played the game, but they have like the cutscenes you can watch on yeah. the remastered versions that they've released. And so I've watched all of Recoded, but the rest of them I've played, and I think all of them now I've beaten multiple times because this past like late summer and fall I actually played through the entire series again in preparation of Kingdom Hearts three coming out. Uh, so a I, lot I did of time. I, I that's that was the I finished up uh, with it right before I played Dragon Quest eleven, and we all know how that turned out. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so that's what I was doing before Dragon Quest. But uh, yeah, so I played through all of them uh, for the second or sometimes third or fourth times. Um, Kingdom Hearts 1, which is was my favorite for a long time, I think I've played through it like six or seven times now. Wow. All yeah. the way through. I don't know if I've ever actually beaten Kingdom Hearts 1, because when Jennifer went back through it, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but when Jennifer went back through it, I told her that she was done. She stayed up late one night uh, to get to the final boss and beat it, and then she wasn't done like there was another world or something after that because apparently when i was you know whatever it was 2002 or whenever it came out i beat that boss and didn't know where to go at, or i guess and never never went back like i thought i'd beaten the game uh -huh. and then I, when she moved forward past that i was like oh oh i didn't beat this i, I almost guarantee you it's probably hollow bastion because you get saved from there and you end up i think back in uh, traverse town yep and uh, you have to actually fly back to Hollow Bastion and jump inside the little heart thing to take out a behemoth. Yep, I had absolutely no yep. idea about it uh, until she had done it. So it was like, wow, that's it, it was new content to me whenever uh, whenever I did that. And I've watched like you all of the the videos of like recoded and things like that on uh, YouTube and and everything as it went through. And I the only one I haven't seen are the ones on the two point eight. Uh, I didn't do uh, Dream Drop Distance, um, whatever the fragmentary passage was, and then the uh, Kai Key. I don't back cover. I back didn't cover. Watch, but you, but you did. You watched me beat Dream Drop Distance at my house. I did. And you watched me play, I think, through all of Fragmentary Passage, right? Not all. It was the very end of it. We ended up having to drive back up home uh, while you were like approaching maybe 30 minutes from the end of it. So, okay. Cool. But I knew you were there most, for, like, of it. most of it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So I'm uh, so I go into this not not really getting the the full Dream Drop Distance stuff, but I know I have a pretty good grasp of it. So I think that Kingdom Hearts 3 here... Uh, well, let me let me go back just a little bit. First of all, it's been what fourteen years since Kingdom Hearts two came out. Thirteen, thirteen yeah. years, <laughs> and so I know you and me and a lot of other people have been waiting for it. And there are so many people I know, Void, and a lot of people who have not bothered with these spinoffs. Even though I think that Birth by Sleep is a much better game uh, than either the first or second one. Like it's my favorite one. Just they did so many things right, but. Um, like it's been 13 years. Was this worth the wait for you? Like, I know that you're, you are super hyped up on it. Like, or at least for a long time. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think it was, it was worth the wait, but l let me back up for a second. So, so the thing <laughs> about kingdom hearts is I think people like 
they call it a trilogy, and I think that's a mistake. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think they're really side. I don't think they're side games, really. Like, I think they're just because they don't have a number beside of them. I think you kind of have to approach this as like a whatever seven or eight part series yeah. for the most part. I mean, there's definitely some that have less story in it, but I mean, especially like Birth by Sleep. Um, which I know uh, Namira has said, like that he considers that like the a part of Kingdom Hearts. Like it's Kingdom Hearts Zero, and then you go yeah. one, two, three. I'm actually amazed like, after that that they didn't name it Kingdom Hearts Zero because yeah. of how important it is. I was I was honestly surprised that when we started three, how important that particular game was. That it is a Birth by Sleep sequel almost more than anything else. And that's actually what uh, got me to play Birth by Sleep first is that i had read an interview and he had said hey you know if you don't play any other kingdom hearts games make sure you play one two and birth by sleep okay if you play those three then you should be okay and this was like years ago this was like it was around the right after i got married i want to say so it's probably like 2012 oh wow. 2013 i mean it was a long time ago and birth by sleep they didn't have the 2.5 remix on ps3 yet or anything and so uh, I actually bought like the PSP game. I was going to buy a PSP just to play it. And then they announced like just almost like the next day that they were going to have it uh, release like the remixes or yeah. whatever. And so I just sold the PSP version and waited for 2.5 to come out. I think it came out like later in the year, like around December or sometime. But anyway, I got it uh, to play it. And then... Um, so I think it's one of those things that even though there's like, it's been 13 years since two, like I think you really have to or need to play them. I mean, Dream Drop Distance, which I know you didn't like very well. Um, like I think that one in Birth by Sleep especially are important. The back cover stuff, at least watch the cinematics if you skip. like Because I mean, I haven't played the mobile game very much at all. I, I, I have I, like I've played a lot of the mobile game. There was a good uh, time period actually whenever I watched you play Fragmentary Passage that I played the uh, Union Key Cross. I think that's the name of it. And um, the story was incomprehensible that I was going through it and it's so long. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of levels that you have to get through and read this uh, this story with it's just I didn't like it, and so I've read up on what was going on in it based on uh, everyone else actually getting through it. And it's and crazy that is actually he, canon that they're tying into Kingdom Hearts three. Well, well, the back cover stuff that they include with two point eight, I think, is the kind of the important stuff you need to know. And I think that's why they they made this because back cover for those people who don't know, back cover is like I want to say it's about an hour and a half long. It's just a CGI movie. It's divided up into like 12 chapters or yeah. something like that. Anyway, and you watch these little snippets of chapters and it's set like years before the Keyblade Wars and way, way before Kingdom Hearts 1 or Birth by Sleep or any of them. Yeah, like, this so is the this very- is like hundreds and hundreds of years before uh, we even see anyone, like anything remotely that we're playing through. Yeah, so, um, so anyway, to go back to your original question, do I think it was worth the 13-year wait? I think... It's been good, but it's one of those things where really, to me at least, and I think to a lot of people who have played the series, it hasn't, it's been a long time to just see it kind of come to an end, I guess, or at least the, they call this the Dark Seeker, Dark Seeker, right? I don't Dark know. Seeker saga, yeah. All the stuff that deals with like Xehanort and this whole story is supposed to end with Kingdom Hearts 3, where they've okay. said yeah. the franchise isn't dead, but the, this story is supposed to wrap up with, like this is the supposed to be the end of the dark seeker saga it may not be saga right and there's somebody listening to this that's like yelling at me for saying it's the wrong thing the dark seeker part is the correct part it's some dark seeker something and it has to do all these games that from you know kingdom hearts 1 in 2002 all the way up to kingdom hearts 3 right now and every game side game whatever you want to call it encompasses all of that um so it's going to be interesting to see because i haven't beaten the game yet so I'm I'm about halfway through because I keep getting sidetracked by side quests. Yeah, you uh, do. But it's going to be interesting to see like where the series goes after this, and I don't know how I don't know how it ends. So I feel like I'd probably have a better uh, understanding, like some guesses after right. I see the ending. But at this point, I'm just like you know, no clue. 
there are some things. Okay, for me, it was kind of worth the wait because it's kind of the same way for you. Like, I loved this game. I've beaten it already. Like, I got to the credits and it took me about 40 hours to get there. And uh, so I got there actually yes. <clears throat> excuse me. I got there yesterday and I've been playing now, uh, going back through a lot of the worlds, doing some of the side quests, looking for the hidden things, getting treasures and all of that. And so the further I've gotten into it, the more I felt that it was actually worth it because I really, really like it. But you're, it's just like you said that this doesn't necessarily feel like a sequel, uh, to the, the second one from 13 years ago because it's just been a regular series that we've been able to keep up with. I wasn't sure how much the feel was going to change between them. And, uh, so, so I think it was both worth the wait and it's another really good sequel. Um, but I've heard a lot of people, and I know you included initially have not liked this game. That I don't know if it was hype or if it was expectation being a new PS4, uh, finally a next generation Kingdom Hearts, what it was. But so many people are complaining about the combat, about the story being incomprehensible, uh, about not knowing what's going on, even though they're trying to recap it for people. And like, what was, cause you hated it. Like you sent me a message the second day saying, I hate it. I'm angry that I bought the deluxe edition and I'm going to, I'm trying to sell it. I'm looking for a way to sell my deluxe edition right now. And this yeah. was after, um, what, two hours into it? Or did you no. even get that far? No, five. Five. That was five hours into it. Five hours. Yeah. It was so here, here's my problem with it is that, and maybe it's because I had repl I've replayed all the games like not too long before this one came out. So I was familiar with the story, but also, I've re I have just replayed them. I've played them all. I've also like I've super nerded out on the series. Like I've read like the manga and like the no they have novelizations actually. I didn't know that. Uh, I knew I've read. Manga. I, I haven't read all the novelizations. They're they're translated into English. You can buy them on Amazon for like ten bucks. Okay. I've read the novelization of one and two and Chain of Memories. I start off with Chain of Memories because I could never make myself play it and I no. wanted to read the story, and so I bought the novelization. And liked it well enough that I just went ahead, uh, maybe last summer, anyway, one summer, when I just wanted to sit around and read, and uh, went ahead and bought the novelization for Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. And I believe uh, Birth by Sleep, maybe, was the next one. It hadn't okay. come out in English yet at the time when I was reading these. Those were the only three that were out. Uh, but nice. anyway, I read, I read those three. So maybe that's why, like, because all the cutscenes, that was my biggest problem, is that it was really boring to me because I knew the story. And I think I even told you that I was mad because I wanted to play a video game, and what I got was five hours of Donald and Goofy explaining the plot of Kingdom Hearts. Yes. Like, that's just what it felt like. It was just them kind of, and they, I felt like Sora's always kind of been, like, slow on the <laughs> update, you know? Yes. But I felt like they super dumbed him down at the beginning of this one just so Donald and Goofy could, like, explain everything yep they did so, so it was really boring that was boring and then i feel like i still think is i like olympus fine like it's a fine world to visit but i think it was just kind of a huge mistake to start off there it was uh, like, I don't understand that decision. The more I've I've played through these other worlds, and I understand the idea. Uh, you get into the game, y'all. Uh, for those of you who haven't started it yet, you get into the game, and as soon as you actually get to play, get into the combat, they they dump you on Olympus, and you're thinking generally. I knew this was the case going in, but generally in the Kingdom Hearts games, Olympus has always been a coliseum, and this is the first time in the Kingdom Hearts series it's been a complete world where you can go out explore Thebes and Mount Olympus, everything. And it, was, it was a world in two. It was the underworld. You explored the underworld of Arin. There was still okay. there was the Underdome that was the Colosseum, but you did actually explore it. In okay. I didn't it. actually remember the uh, the underworld, but you're right because you fight uh, Cerberus. Yeah, so there's, there's it's not as much to explore as this one. Sorry to interrupt you there, but yeah, it's it's not as much as Kingdom Hearts 3, but there is it is a whole world with but it's stuff that we've seen before. It's Hades doing his thing. You've got the Titans and, and just all of this. And it's fun and good. And it's really pretty, except for Hercules. Hercules is, looks weird in this game to me for some reason. Like everybody else is beautiful, but Herc looks odd. See, Hercules, Hades, and like Meg, like all the Hercules crew does. And I think it's because this is the only 
world that isn't CGI. The movie's not CGI. Yeah. And I think that's why it looks so weird is because they're not animated like we're used to them being. Yeah, they're trying to shade to... it, and it's it didn't work. Yeah, it, it looked really weird. But you get through this, and and you you said that the uh, the there's a battle that reminds you of the uh, Titan battle in uh, in Final Fantasy 15. That's pretty much it, uh, stroke for stroke, and. I like this better. Like I like this fight better than the one in, in Final Fantasy 15. Uh because you're right, it is the same mechanic, but it's much better in this one, I think. But uh when you get past this, y'all, it's cutscene after cutscene and when you beat Olympus, there is seriously an hour and a half of cutscenes that you cannot save. That before the boss fight you get a save point and then an hour and a half later through cutscenes you get another save point. And, and there that is, a- is awful. And there is an autosave, but if you're like me, you don't always trust autosaves, especially after that Olympus, you, you fight off like four Titans there at the end. And it's just like, it's such a tedious fight anyway, that like, I want a hard save. I don't trust yes. the autosave. I don't trust autosave after that. And I was waiting on that. That was the first night. Jennifer wanted the TV and we only have one TV and the PS4 is hooked up to it. So it was, uh, we wanted to watch TV and I was like, I don't trust anything. It's like, I, even if my power goes off on this PlayStation, I don't want to have to do all this again. And, but I kept going later and it's still like all the way through this, it has felt like a, it felt, feels like a, a Xeno Saga game. Like it, they're a Xenoblade game where there is, there are too many cutscenes for a Kingdom Hearts game. Like they've really doubled down on the story and what that, is weird because the story just straight up doesn't make sense. Like, I don't care. I love the story. <laughs> like you guys, y'all, y'all who have listened to this podcast for a while know that I love kingdom hearts. Know that I love that. I actually like the story in this. It doesn't make any sense. And they tried to make this one make sense. And it just makes it make less sense. Yeah. You know, you know, your story is in trouble when you have to rely on clones, time travel, and other dimensions to try to make it make sense. And this is that's not spoilers, y'all. That is yeah, it's, it's that's, from other games. That's yeah. stuff that's in all of the games. So they're just bringing in everything from the other games. And I think that's really where a lot of people bounced off of this game because it brings in everything from the other games and kind of mashes it into one uh, one ball. And they do that in every aspect of the game where I know people have said, uh, Austin included, that the co- that the combat is too chaotic, mm-hmm. that uh, there's just too much going on because they've included uh, these new attractions. You've got shot lock. You now have uh, access to situation commands. There's a grand magic uh, s- uh, system. There's t- power uh, team ups that your you and your teammates can do. You get uh, form changes on every weapon, sometimes multiples per keyblade and it's a lot i know i'm forgetting something you get you get links i don't think you mentioned links you, you get, get links, links like by sleep and so, so there's stuff. summons and uh it's a lot going on and honestly the way that i sorted it out was by just ignoring the ones i didn't like as much that unless i absolutely had to use them like i don't like the attractions so i very yeah. rarely use the attractions which, which i think is really funny because I love the attractions. Really? That's, that's one of my favorite. It, some of them I don't like because they just take too long to like, but you can skip you the can animation. skip the animation. I think the reason I like the animation. So, so let me skip ahead for just a second too with this. My two favorite things from the game right so far is I really like the attractions and I really love the lucky emblems, the hidden Mickeys you find. Right. And I think it's because like, I, I love going to Disney World. You know, <laughs> yes, yes. My, my family and I, we live in Florida. We're like two hours from Disney World. We have our annual passes. We go to Disney World like all the time. So, and that's one of my favorite things to do at Disney World is look for the hidden Mickeys that they put on. Sometimes it's like some, like things have to line up just right to make a Mickey head. Sometimes it's etched in a wall or the floor or whatever. And it's mm-hmm. super fun. So it's like a little thing you can walk around Disney and play. And so whenever I found out those were in Kingdom Hearts 3, I, I got super excited. And I love that. And the attractions, I think I like for the same reason is that it reminds me of Disney World. And anything that reminds me of Disney World makes me happy. Uh, so I think that's why I like it, even though it's not necessarily a practical way to battle at all. No. And it is kind of one of those things that now that I've seen all the attractions, 
that the game has, like I don't use them hardly at all. They introduce all but one of them in Olympus, and that was a mistake. Like, there's only uh, one of them that I can think of that I didn't see in Olympus. Oh, wow. See, I didn't... I got two, I think, in Olympus, and then the rest kind of came later. Okay. So I didn't... But it could just be... Yeah, I mean, I think it's... It kind of seems to be RNG-based. I don't know. They say it's based on the area that you're in, but when I saw everything but uh, the carousel in Olympus, I was like, all right, that's odd that all of these are here. But it... It's one of those things that I, I didn't want those to begin with. Like when they announced those and showed the first video, I'm like, this is going to make combat insane and dumb. And it did. And so I've told everybody that between the combat, between the, uh, between the story cutscenes, uh, between the, the, just all of this stuff that if you're in at all, that you need to wait until you get to the end of the Toy Story world. That you have Olympus first, uh, which is the tutorial, uh, essentially. You get to uh, Twilight Town, uh, which is your main hub in this game. Like You always get either Twilight or Traverse Town. And in this one, uh, then you move on and you can have Toy Story be the first one. Get to the end of Toy Story before you decide to bounce. This is what I said about Persona 5. You know, wait until you get to the end of the first palace before you decide that it's not for you. Because I'm really glad that I waited there. And that's really when the game opens up. The end of the Toy Story world is really where you see what this game is. Like, how it differentiates itself from the other games. And I know that uh, that Void felt that way. That he got to the end of the toy store and was like, okay, this one was a lot better than all the others. Like, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go to the end, I think. And then I know you sent me a text message that I now have a screenshot of where you actually (laughs) said you were right. uh, Quote, Austin King, February 1st. uh, And uh, I was like... Can frame that. I'm going to. I'm going to print that out. That's going to be on my office. Like instead of my family photo, it's just going to be that. Um, but uh, just you were right, and I'm like, yeah, I was. Um, but that's what it is. Like it hits that point. It's like, oh, okay. I see. There, are, there are a good seven or eight hours of this game that are very poorly designed to be the first seven or eight hours of this game. Depending on how you play. For me, it was like 15 hours because I. I I tried to find all the hidden emblems, the lucky mm. emblems, hidden Mickeys in each world before going on. And I did a lot of backtracking for treasure chests. Okay. So I'm trying to get all the, I'm trying to get all the lucky emblems and treasures in each world before I go on through. So like I'm already like at 22 hours, I think. And okay. I've only just now gotten to the like, fourth or fifth world, which is not actually that ridiculous in terms of, of gameplay time. Uh, I, at least as far as I remember. I don't know. Like, just looking at the time you took to complete it, like, I think I might be done with, like, the sixth world by 40 hours. And part but- of it is because I actually got engaged by this story. Like, I know that it is incomprehensible. I know it doesn't make any <laughs> sense. And But there are characters in this that I really like. Like, Aqua is my favorite character in the series. Like, I yeah, love Aqua. And they have an Aqua subplot that I was keeping on going to see where it went. Uh, And there were a couple others like that. And it wasn't the main Sora story. Um, Like, it it never really has been. And uh, so I kept going through that. And the worlds that had new stories and were not rehashes of the other, of the movies again, are way better than the ones that are movie rehashes. And that's the reason why I actually like Kingdom Hearts 3 better than Kingdom Hearts 2 is because Kingdom Hearts 2 was a lot of just you go to point A to point B and then it's a cut scene and then point B to point C and it's a cut scene and there's not a lot of exploring you can do. And I think Kingdom Hearts 3 has a lot more exploring, but also the cut scenes don't seem to be just based off the movie. Kingdom yeah. Hearts 2, Kingdom Hearts 1, you know, had its own little story. It wasn't that you're playing through the movie and Kingdom Hearts 2 was just playing through the movie. I'm pretty much every single world yep. until the, you know there's that big event like halfway through where you start going to like organization 13 in each world but so much of two is just watching the movie and so far i've only been to one world where it's just a rehash of the plot of the movie and even then it's like so so like they still yeah. throw in extra stuff and there's about half and half on this for which ones are 
pretty much the movie mirror versus the uh, the brand new uh, brand new plot. And you know, we're trying not to give you any spoilers that that you couldn't have gotten just by like actually just looking at the official Twitter or anything like that. So so you don't have to worry. But uh, the the Big Hero Six was an all new story, and so I adored that as much as I would have loved. You know, that one I probably would have been okay with them redoing the movie just to be able to uh, to play in that world. Having a new one was also was also just great. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean one, okay, Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> and Kingdom Hearts two was the worst. The worst. Uh, I, yeah. I did not like it. I, I don't know anyone who did like it. And part of my dislike comes from both. I don't like pirates and I don't like the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. And so I didn't want to do any of this. Then in Kingdom Hearts 3, there is a pirates level, which I'm like, why would you include this again, Nomura? And I get in there and it mirrors Pirates 3. The movie that is literally in the top two worst movies I've ever seen <laughs> alongside Transformers 2. Because but have you seen have you seen the fourth and fifth Pirates movies? I saw the the fourth one with the mermaid, right? Okay, yeah. And I did not see five because the fourth one was only slightly more comprehensible than the third one. The and third. so I was like, I'm done. And so I go in there, they're doing this, and you haven't even gotten to this world yet. So you may yeah. actually like parts of it. That, uh, the also, the, the, there, there are parts of it that are enjoyable. First of all, the, uh, the, the graphics are absolutely stunning in this world. Like the, the setting is great. The, uh, and their ship combat that I think, uh, it was, it may have been data error on Twitter who told me that, uh, I can't remember. And if it wasn't, if it was you who told me this, correct me, uh, somebody, uh, that, uh, one day Nomura was playing Assassin's Creed Black Flag and decided, I want to make this game and then put it into Kingdom Hearts 3 <laughs> because that's what it is, apparently. And and that's fine for what it is. Um, but the story I actually stopped paying attention to because it made l- less sense than a Kingdom Hearts story, which is astonishing. And um, the uh, there's underwater combat. And which was the absolute worst part of any of the other Kingdom Hearts games, especially one and two, was when you were underwater with Ariel. Like everybody hated it. It was pretty like they love the areas, but they hated the underwater part of it. So why don't we take the two things that everybody pretty much universally reviled about the first two games and put them in the exact same world along with the worst of all the movies? It's like, it really is like he is just being petty at this point. He's like, I'm putting this in whether y'all want it or not. And, and I actually have a question for you. Okay. And I don't think this gets into spoilers, but I, I'm just curious. So I know in Kingdom Hearts 1, you don't actually have to play all the worlds to beat the game. Right. Do you have to play? like So you can't skip pirates. You, no, have to you can't play. skip pirates because the way that it opens up is you beat... Once you beat the worlds that it has open for you, it opens up the next, uh, the okay. next few. And there's one that you can't even access until you've completed all the rest of them. Uh, okay. gotcha. so, um, and I played through in order of the levels they were like, I'm on standard mode where they, the, the combat is not hard, but the combat can, I didn't want to go in on a, on being really under leveled because the combat would take a long time. And mm-hmm. so I was just making sure that I didn't have these really tedious fights more than anything else. And, uh, so you might be able to beat the hardest one. At, like, I think that is actually, um, Big Hero 6 is the last of the, like, Disney worlds but then you uh go in and it opens up some other section of the map and you uh you just continue on from there so it's uh yeah pirates not very good um but so i'm gonna be curious when you get there because you love the ocean you love boats and that kind of thing is actually something you look for in games but i know you hated the pirates area in two i started to say but i hated the pirates area in two and the Little Mermaid area in one is my least favorite level as well. For the for the reasons you mentioned. I mean, I hate swimming underwater and you know the pirates thing. The my problem with the pirates world in, in the second one too is it's just it's boring. It looks really bland compared to all the other worlds you visit. And I like I hate the Tron level too. Like the oh, Tron, I loved it. The, the music, I hate the music, I hate the look of it, just everything about it. But at least it looks different. 
like pirates just it looks very plain it's dark and you're playing through the first pirates movie in kingdom hearts 2 and it's just like so just boring and dull and i just did not like it i will say that they did rectify it because this one is bright and colorful and they did a really good job on the world itself. Like I even went back there this morning looking for Mickey's and uh-huh. didn't hate it because I wasn't dealing with any of the rest of it other than just running around and doing stuff. So and it I, looks beautiful. Yeah, like the screenshots I've seen look awesome. And part of me, even like until you shared the story about Black Flag, like I had just assumed that they put it in there so that they could show off how pretty they could make something. Oh, and they may have. That was entirely a conjecture tweet. Like, that wasn't a, an actual thing. But uh, it was, that's really, that is what it feels like. Like, it's yeah. like, oh, hey, that would be cool. Um, but to me, all of this is a very good game. I'm still playing it after I beat it. And I think you, I don't remember if it was you or Void this morning that texted me and said that uh, I'm the one who tries to uh, finish the story and not do a lot of the, uh, of the, Sometimes I'll do some of the mini stuff, but not really go back through it a whole lot. Yeah, that was, that was, that was yeah. you. Okay. I, I have these conversations with both of you and sometimes they're actually going on concurrently like they were this morning. And uh-huh. so I honestly had no idea which one of you uh, was talking about that. So it was like, I, I have, I, I went through the game and now I'm actually enjoying going back, which doesn't happen a whole lot. Like when I beat Breath of the Wild, I never went back for the uh, shrines like I thought I would. Like I had every intention of doing it. And I'm I'm much more of like a I guess you would call it like a completionist type player. You know, it's a PS4. I always try to I try to go for the platinum trophy a lot, and then sometimes I keep playing it after that. <laughs> Dragon but Quest Eleven, it, Dragon Quest Eleven, Nino Kuni Two, but also even things like Breath of the Wild. You know, there wasn't any trophies, but I went through and did all the shrines, did all this before the updates. At least I'd done everything except getting the Korok seeds. Oh yeah. I, found out there's like 900 and something of them and if you do them all the only thing you get is a golden poop the guy hands you a golden poop <laughs> that's what it is it's just a golden turd that he hands you i, and, I have uh, to look this up because i'll never I, do it but i'm looking it yeah, up in a minute. i was like i was like it's totally not worth it i'd found like a hundred and something and thought i was like making progress <laughs> and i looked it up and saw that there was like 900 and something and so i just i didn't do that one but yeah i like to try to do everything in a game and um, so like, I know one time, I know like a few weeks back, you've been talking about the living Pokedex thing, you know, about how I was telling you about the living Pokedex. Like I'm that kind of player. Like I have to go through and do every little thing and try to just complete like all of it. And so, so I, I am a little bit slower about playing through things. Like anytime you and I start a game at the same time, it's like four days go by and you, you're like, I beat it and I'm done now. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like maybe halfway if that. And I've just, I've been playing just as long as you, but like, I'm like nowhere near to being done because I've been sidetracked with like all the other like mini games and side content and Except stuff. Except for Nino Kuni 2. That one I'm still stalled out on. That's but, true. But with this but, one. But it's because of a mini game. It is. It is because of a mini game. That you're absolutely right. It is one of the mini games I didn't want to do. Um, <laughs> And and I like some mini games. I know we were talking last week about that, that in the Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest games. Like there are some mini games I really like, and this one has a lot more mini games in it than other Kingdom Hearts games that I recall at least, because almost every world has something that you can come back to and then uh, complete for a high score for some sort of different item that counts toward a trophy. So that I think that's new. I don't remember in any of the ones I've it, played. It, it's you. It's because uh, you said you didn't get very far in Kingdom Hearts 2, the final remix, right? Yeah, not the final mix. Okay. I, I played the original PS2 one? Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I hadn't played the final remix of Kingdom Hearts 2 until this past year. I'd always played my PS2 one just over and over. Yeah. They actually added in uh, some puzzle pieces. You go to each world and you find puzzle pieces. They're very similar to the stickers that you find in Birth by Sleep. Okay. Uh, so that keeps you kind of going back. And then they added, it's called Mushroom 13, which is a lot like the Flans, uh, the uh, Flantastic 7 or whatever, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, I said that just for you, because I knew you would giggle. <laughs> um, so, so they did add some of that stuff for the final uh, remix of 2, uh, where you can actually, there's things like that that you find in each world. Right. So similar, but I, but I like 
the stuff in Kingdom Hearts 3 way better. Like, I think the mini games in Kingdom Hearts 3 are my favorite out of any of the other, like, the rest of the series. And they've really fleshed out the worlds like that. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on. And we've mentioned the Lucky Emblems and uh, slash Hidden Mickeys, because I don't know why they didn't just call them Hidden Mickeys, because you, you even pointed out to me that they even call, said it looked like the king, that it looked like Mickey. Mm-hmm. But so, so they've got these on there, and I didn't know until after I'd beaten it that there's a secret ending to this game that uh, you that is reliant on finding a number of hidden Mickeys. That if you are on easy, you said it takes all of the hidden Mickeys to be able to get it, which there are 90. That mm-hmm. if you're on standard, you have to get 60. And if you are on uh, proud mode, then you have to get 30. And so on proud mode, 30 is actually really easy to get. Um, 60, I'm having to go back and actually get, uh, get more of them because I'm not 100%ing it as I'm going through like you are. But I like that the fact that I want to go back and see this instead of YouTubing it. That yeah. there are a, a lot of games where I just be like, I would, I'll just YouTube it. It's not something I want to go back to. But this is one that keeps me going back, which, uh, which actually in my mind speaks very highly of the game itself. Um, even though I know Void, I think doesn't like this game. I think he, he said in a text the text message this morning, um, I don't think this is a very good game, uh, but I'm gonna try to push through to the end. But he, but I know from talking with him on Twitter too, he's only played one and two, right? Right. Yes. So he hasn't played a lot of the side ones. No. So I think I, I think that could be part of it because I definitely think that I think it, it's I think it's really hard. I told him this, but I think it's really hard to go from just playing one and two into three like even even and and i told him this too i mean if if i were in his shoes i totally would have gone for it i would have just popped in three and tried it because three looked amazing like everybody in the world is playing it (laughs) like like, i totally would have just gone for it too but like i i i definitely think that if you've only played one and two like if you're listening and you've only played one and two i i really think you know it's gonna i think it's really gonna make it not a super fun experience because even even with me complaining about how the how long and expository the cutscenes are like if you haven't played it i still don't think you're going to understand it like i don't know who those cutscenes are for because if you played all the games you know what's going on and if you haven't played them then the things they're saying still don't make any sense no and the thing is i think these cutscenes are meant they're because they've released something called the memory archive, which is their way of catching up people on all of the other stuff, which are the are cinematics and summaries of all of this that you can either watch on YouTube or on the disc of the game. Uh, but, or, or you can download it. If you've downloaded, it, it's on the title. I say disc because I bought that one, but you can also, I think these uh, cutscenes were made for people who had, who like me, who had, a knowledge of this stuff, but needed a slight refresher because they just hit enough points for me like, Oh yeah, that had happened. I remember them being friends. And, but if you don't, it's like, why, who are they even talking about? Why is, why is Roxas even important at this point? Uh, because you find that out in many other games and like birth by sleep because the entire, like not even uh spoiler on this one, they're, Roxas actually plays a part in the the overall motivation in this, and so it's like if you've only played two, it's like okay, Roxas is there, and and, and I should say that if you haven't played them, you, they released a thing that's called it's Kingdom Hearts: The Story So Far. Mm-hmm. It has all of these games on it. It's all of them, all the games, including the cutscenes for Recoded, uh, three fifty eight over two, and the the back cover CGI movie like we've been talking about has everything on it. It's all the stuff from 1.5, 2.5, and 2.8. So you can play through all this stuff, and it's only like 40 bucks. So if you're like even remotely interested in Kingdom Hearts, like just go to Amazon, PS4, it's like 40 bucks on there. It was the other day, because I was actually looking at it, because this is really dumb on my part, I know, because I have the other ones already, but they released this other one that's all in one, and now I want it as well, because I have them on like the three different discs. Which is insane, and I know eventually you're going to buy it when you find it cheap <laughs> enough. Uh, because you don't want to pay $40 for it, but you want to pay 19 And the, the so. thing, the, Honestly, the thing that's keeping me from it is that all the other ones, they had collector's editions that came with the pins. I like collecting the little Disney pins. They did. 
And this one doesn't. It's just a standard edition that has all of them on there. And if it came with a pen, I would probably go for it because I collect Disney pens. Yeah. But this one doesn't, so I'm just skipping it. And so they also they had the best Easter egg in this that I've seen some people talking about and some people like not mentioning at all. But I laughed so hard, like it made me so happy because you load up the game, you get through uh, the tutorial stuff, you get out into the world, you get the gummy ship, and you go in. And the splash screen, you're expecting uh, the title of the game, and it just says Kingdom Hearts 2.9. And I died, because they know, y'all know who've listened to this podcast before, that Void and I have talked about how ridiculous the naming conventions are. And now there's the numbering conventions, because they've re-released everything as, like you said, 1.5, 2.5, 2.8. And then uh, there's 0.2, which takes place between, which is a fragmentary passage uh, that takes place between Birth by Sleep and Kingdom Hearts 1. And uh, so... When they did named the t- the prologue of this two point nine, I died. Like it's not long after that. I think it's after that world or that section where it comes up with the main Kingdom Hearts three splash. But it was the best thing in this game to me just to see that. And I apologize if that ruins anything for anybody just seeing it. But knowing that they do have a tongue in cheek kind of awareness that of what this game. is, is and how uh, ridiculous they they've gotten with it makes me very happy. Um, so speaking of Easter eggs, like uh, as you get into one of the worlds, I, I'm not going to talk a lot about it in detail. Uh, so this you might consider this next section a little spoilery, but not a whole lot. Um, we're going to try to keep it as vague as we can. Uh, there is a section called that that deals with. Uh, an area called Verum Rex. It's a a video game that exists within like the Kingdom Hearts world. Right. And so uh, it's in here and it is one of my favorite things about the entire game when they uh, introduced and showed the trailer for Verum Rex. And the first thing I saw, I thought was, uh, oh my goodness, they're just making this Final Fantasy 15 now. It's like, can they not let that property die? And then I realized the more I watched it and the more I thought about it, and you and I talked about Nomura and, uh, is it Tabata getting, uh, who actually did, uh, Kingdom Hearts. Who directed 15. 15. Uh-huh, yeah, he finished up for Nomura in, uh, 2013, I want to say. Because, and took over that, that Virum Rex. Is a, is a kind of a love letter to what Versus 13 was. Uh, what could have been Versus 13 because it's just enough like 15 to, uh, to like make you see where it came from. Like you see the Noctis character, you see the, the Prompto and, uh, Gladiolus and, and all of these, uh, in there and an Arden like character. And I think it honestly looks kind of cool. Like, I would love for this to be real. Like, I wonder if it was him, like, putting all of the assets that he actually had in here and be like, this is what it could have been, guys. And look, look, you know, look what you got. And and I, it's one of my least favorite parts. But, but like, I don't think we've talked about on here, but from texting, your favorite stuff in this game is a lot of times my least favorite. Yes. And my favorite stuff is your least favorite. Like, and the common ground, I think, is the lucky emblems. Yeah, it is. Because the Virum Rex thing, as soon as it, as soon as I saw it, I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm so over Final Fantasy 15. <laughs> I don't want to see this." And then I still didn't really like that part of the game, though, and the way it ties into like other stuff in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I just didn't like any of it, and it just like it's been one of my least favorite parts of the of the game so far. And it I- just feels so out of place to me, and. I'm kind of like, I'm fairly, just knowing the way they do things, like, I'm not going to be surprised if they're just like, hey guys, guess what? This is a real game, like a month from now. Yeah. And this was just kind of like a way to tease it in advance. I would um, love that personally, because it, it feels like it could be like that Final Fantasy Type Zero type, or Type O, I'm not exactly sure which it is, but uh, it feels like one of those games, like it could be. But it, I thought it was just really cool like that. Like you said, we are at uh, polar opposites on this and kind of hinge on the uh, Lucky Emblems being something that we both really like. And um, like I don't like the uh, gummy stuff uh, in general, but they, they changed the gummy ship to where it's not just a rail shooter now, that it's an open world space exploration game. 
and that means I don't have to have combat and deal with all this. I can fly directly to my uh, to my location, my destination. And you don't like this? No, I, I like the real shooter. It was the gummy ship is always an annoying part for me that you have to do to like get between worlds. Yeah, it's always in Dream Drop Distance. They have the gummy ship, but there's just no gummy ship. You're just dropping, but the the mechanics are the same. Yep. You're just falling through outer space and getting in fight. <laughs> and so, I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> it is. I've seen it, but you're, and you're <laughs> right. It's just funny. <laughs> um, so, so the gummy ship though, I like the, the rail shooter at least was like, was just a fine little mini game. The, 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 uh, the new one here, and it's grown on me a little bit because they have a mini game where you can take pictures of constellations. Yep. Um, and I like we've talked about. I like doing pictures, <laughs> like pictures, and I like doing side quests. So that that's kind of fun. But just the, I hate driving the ship around space. And what it reminds me of is it reminds me of being seven years old and having the Tie Fighter game, yep. uh, the Star Wars Tie Fighter game on like Windows ninety five, and having like a little joystick and just being lost in outer space <laughs> for like hours and not knowing what to do. That's what this makes me feel like. It makes me feel like I'm playing TIE Fighter again. And I like those kind of games. I like the open space sims like that. Not not quite sims. Like this is an arcade open open space yeah. game, obviously. But uh, I love that kind of thing. Like in Atlas uh, Battle for... Uh, my goodness. Uh, Starlink, Battle for Atlas. That's why I was like, it's not the title. Uh, stuff like that. I love this open world space stuff. So I saw it and I was like, yes, I can do this. And I still haven't taken a picture of a constellation yet. So uh, I need to get in there and do that. Like you said, we do this in opposite ways. Yeah. Like I've explored some and fought like giant fortresses in space. And you're like, I'm going to take a picture of a constellation <laughs> uh, where, where we approach the. But we, but the thing is, we can find fun in this. Like no matter what they've done, they have. Have made this game for whatever kind of fan of the series you are unless you're a story fan at which point <laughs> it's like just all bets are off like things happen and i like the uh where the story ends up i'm not gonna say anything other than that but when it finished when i got to it i saw it i watched it i liked it and I can't wait to see the secret ending because I think it's going to illuminate a lot of the other stuff that that the actual ending and epilogue didn't touch on. It's it's just Goofy's dream. That's the that's the secret movie. Goofy wakes up and this whole thing has just been Goofy's dream. And, goes, and he's like, yeah. a hilka, hilka, hilka. <laughs> yeah. and like Max is like outside skateboarding and it's just a goof troop episode. I would love that. If you don't like, like not the dream, like if it was just a goofy dream, it wouldn't do it. But if it actually turned out to be a goof troop yeah, episode goofy, and just, yeah. and the splash of goof troop. Door. Yeah. Max is skateboarding outside. I would lose my mind if that were yeah. the case. I would love that. Um, like in the good way, like lose my mind in the good way. Like yeah. if it were only if it were goof troop though. I said it as a joke, but now that we're talking about it, I'm like, I, I loved goof troop, you know? I know like that's, that's That'd be a cool little twist. <laughs> and, and I know you and I had talked about it uh, before. Did we talk about it on here about the uh, the characters in your party, or was it before we started recording? Uh, no, we haven't talked about that yet. So Enough. One, one of the biggest annoyances in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 uh, is that you don't get to keep both Donald and Goofy in your party if you want to play with any of the Disney characters or side characters, that you uh, have to choose one of them to take out of your team and put the other one in. In Kingdom Hearts 1, Austin had pointed out that it's through save points is the only place that you can change in and out party members. And then in Kingdom Hearts 2, you can do it on the fly, but you can still only have three members in your party. In 3, they have finally figured out how to break the tech limitations of that and let you have got Donald and Goofy in your party at all times and then they just add the Disney characters in on the side like you have uh, Woody and Buzz or uh, Jack Sparrow or whoever following you around uh, as part of your party like you can give them items do everything that you would want to do otherwise they level up but you don't have to get rid of Donald and Goofy and I think this is fantastic because for the first time in a Kingdom Hearts game I get to play with Donald in my party because he <laughs> is he is a garbage human being and uh, like my, my wife I'd done a, a, an early impressions blog of this uh, that I'll link to in the show notes but my wife said that uh, her favorite 
favorite part about me playing Kingdom Hearts games is the profane things that she can hear me yelling at Donald Duck while she's in the other room. And it's like, uh, if, if he wouldn't be so terrible, I wouldn't have to. And he's had 18 years to get better, and he hasn't. Hey, he's better in this one. He actually heals you in Kingdom Hearts 3. He will heal you sometimes in Kingdom Hearts 3. Really? I haven't, the time, had, I haven't had trouble yet. He is still, except he doesn't cast fire as often as arrow for me. He will cast oh, arrow oh. and, and, uh, and heal occasionally. Like he's, I, I hate ending a hard battle and he still has all of his potions. Like why Donald? But it's like, I think they did that on purpose. Like I'm fairly certain they have made Donald like they could have done it because I know Square has the, the, the capability of AI that heals you because of Dragon Quest 11. They just didn't with Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, and, and like, but I like it. This is a change that I really truly think was a long time coming. And, uh, it was just a small quality of life thing to have, have them in the party at all times. And especially in Kingdom Hearts 1, it was such a pain in the butt because you had to do the trinities. Yep. And you could only activate trinities if Donald and Goofy were in your party. But then, like, I'm thinking of about the Aladdin level of Kingdom Hearts 1. It's like you needed Aladdin because he had to call oh, yeah. Goofy to come over and grab the stone. So, like, when you're in the Cave of Wonders. So you had to have him in the party for that kind of stuff. But then you had to have Donald or Goofy in your, and Goofy in your party to do the, the trinity stuff. And it just made it so hard to like switch in and out constantly trying to do all that stuff. And I've gotten to where most of the time when I play Kingdom Hearts 1 now, I just keep both of them in my party and don't even use the guest member. Oh, wow. Because it's, it's just much easier to do find the trinities along the way that way instead of having to backtrack with Donald yeah. in my party or whatever. Um, so, but yeah, I totally agree. Like This has been great because you usually have you know that extra fourth or even fourth and fifth members. Yeah. In your party. And the other thing I like is that this is the first one that I, I can remember at least. I don't often give the guest members like gear and items and stuff yeah. in these games, but this is the first one that I remember that when they leave your party, they give it all back. Like automatically, I noticed that, and uh, it didn't make me actually give them items. But for some reason, they actually had items. Maybe I'd done it by accident, but they gave the items back at the end. I was like, "Oh, I probably should have been doing that a lot sooner." Because mm -hmm. uh, I would, I remember in one of those games at least, like having like losing items along the way because I'd give it to a guest member in my party, uh -huh. and then I would go to other worlds and then realize I didn't have it anymore. So I just quit. So like the last like 10 years of me playing Kingdom Hearts games, I never give guest party members anything. Nope. And I thought I'd give it a try again in this one. And sure enough, um, I think it's in Kingdom of Corona is when it happened. Yeah. I got all my items and everything, the items and gear that I had uh, given to Rapunzel, which, I mean, if you've seen the trailers, you know she's in it. So I don't think that's a spoiler. But, um, but yeah, you know, she gives it all back. And so... Um, so that was cool, and I and I haven't tried it out in other worlds, but I'm assuming they always give it back before you leave or before they I think leave. So because that's that's the uh, that may have been the world that it happened to me in like that, and I haven't done it again because they the the combat's not hard; it's just chaotic, and so I haven't needed to give them anything. Uh, yeah. But I, I've really liked having them just there. Um, and th speaking of trinities, I thought that's what the lucky emblems were at first. So, uh, the first one I saw was in Olympus, um, and it was on the side of a wall that I, I had, I was able to climb up. So I spent a long time doing every attack that I could trying to get myself to stick and touch it that I thought I just wasn't touching it the right way to activate it to get the, uh, the, the, the triangle command. And so I was just, it was just me literally banging my head against a wall for a good long time. I finally just moved on and then realized I didn't have the, uh, the, the ability to, uh, to collect it yet. And it's funny that you said that, because I did literally the exact same thing. <laughs> it, was it was the wall you can climb in Olympus. And I was, like, smacking it with my keyblade and, like, trying all kinds of things to try to activate it. And finally, because you had played, you had gotten your game earlier, so you were ahead of me. So finally, I text you, and I was like, hey, man, what's with the hidden Mickey? <laughs> you had told me, hey, you're going to get a camera later on, and you take pictures of the lucky emblem that's a mini game." And so I just kind of let it go and committed to memory whenever I found them in that level. But wow. um, yeah, I did the same thing. I wasted so much time just like whacking away at the little Mickey on the wall trying to 
get it to activate. So for those of you who uh, who play this afterward, just don't don't waste your time. Uh, you'll get it in like an hour after that, and you can go back and uh, and do it. But uh, so like there were things that they had. Like I have the the the. Funko Pop that they released from GameStop, like right behind me, right behind me here, uh, with of Sora riding the the Heartless Wave, and they released this in the very first like CGI trailer they had done of what they wanted the game to look like back in like 2010. Was it that they did this? I think you may be thinking about Final Fantasy 15. It was it was the same E3. Because you were at my house and we watched it together. Hearts, it was the same E3 as 15. Yep. Because oh, okay. Kingdom Hearts 3, they didn't have gameplay of it yet, and they mm-hmm. gave a concept trailer of what they wanted it to look like, mm-hmm. and it was being chased by him being chased by it, Heartless Wave. It would have been it would have been like 2013, probably, because I was married already. I got married in 2012, so um, so it would have been an E3 after that. Which, but, regardless, but, though, anyway, we yeah, had, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. We, no one listening to this cares about that. <laughs> but uh, but whenever they did that initially, like they've had Sora on this Heartless Wave, I never saw it in the game. Like, I don't know if you have or not yet, or well, if well, somebody else has. Like, the did trailer, I? Mean? The trailer showed it in Twilight Town, and in Twilight Town in the game, there is the Wave of Heartless. I must not have ever been a in the right spot to be able to ride it. Then, oh, I mean, I didn't. I mean, I didn't ride it. I just. I mean, I wasn't riding it, okay. but um, you do you do ride it in Aqua rides it in Fragmentary Passage, I think, right? Like that's the first time I've seen a wave of Heartless like that. I don't know if I got to that point with you. Okay, anyway, but, I think you did because it's uh, it's it's all over that one. It's, maybe like, I did and just didn't think about just, it because Fragmentary Passage. You know, whenever I started playing it, you and I were talking about it. We were like, "Oh, this is totally just a demo for yep. Kingdom Hearts 3. And like, it is. And it is. Yeah. The the graphics, the gameplay, like some of the enemies, a lot of it is just from Fragmentary Passage. I yep. mean, it definitely was just like a demo. Because in 2.8, when you were doing that, like I was visiting and you beat Dream Drop Distance and I saw the ending of it, uh, which just so you guys know, if you don't play it, is the very beginning of Kingdom Hearts 3. Like from what uh-huh. I remember, it is, and, and I think you verified this, that it was basically the exact same scene. Yeah, I can't oh. remember. I can't remember if it's the if it was the secret ending or not to Dream Drop Distance because Dream Drop Distance, like every Kingdom Hearts game, has multiple endings. Right. And I definitely know one of the endings was the beginning of Kingdom Hearts three. And I, I just see. don't remember like which ending it was. It was one that I saw. So if it wasn't yeah. at your house, it was uh, online when I looked stuff. No, up. I mean, I mean, I, I unlocked all the endings for Dream Drop Distance. So I mean, you would have seen it at my house. I'm just not sure. If it's just like the normal ending or like the okay. secret ending, the bonus ending, I mean, there's and that I have no clue about. Yeah. But I see it, and so um, and then going directly into fragmentary passage, there it was like, oh yeah, this is a technic- this is just a tech upgrade. Even from the remaster of uh, of Dream Drop, it was uh, just astonishing at how much better they had made it in that. And that is one of the things that I have to say about this game is that it is just. The engine is good. Like, I wish, honestly, that the next Final Fantasy game were made with this graphics engine because it doesn't slow down like the Final Fantasy 15 did in certain areas. And uh, I only got slowed down when there were literally thousands of things going on on screen with different particles, and, and they actually had to move back to sprites at times. And, and I really like the... I, I wish they would do it with Final Fantasy... Because I don't like just the hyper realistic looking stuff. So yeah. the Kingdom Hearts kind of the world map stuff where it looks a little more animated looks really nice to me because that's the kind of design I just kind of prefer in video games anyway. So uh, so I really like that aspect of it. And I should while we we're talking about Funko Pops really quick is earlier today actually my wife went to Target and brought home it's a Target exclusive Sora like where he looks like a monster yeah but he's orange. And I haven't gotten that far in that world. Is, does he turn orange in that world at all? Because he's gray right now. I think I know where he would, and maybe I will go try something. Because, because yeah. they had. I mean, it's an action figure, so I, you know, I don't feel like it's a spoiler here. But yeah, it's it's only at Target. He needs orange, and I have the gray one because right. because 
I have a lot of Funko Pops. You know that. Yes. I also have a lot of Kingdom Hearts ones. Like, I think I probably have somewhere in the 30s of the Kingdom Hearts ones. Like, I have, I've been actually, I'd stopped trying to collect them because there were just too many. And then, uh, and I felt bad about having like 50 Soras. But, yeah. um, and Grace texted me and was like, hey, look what I found. And I was like, yeah. So, had to get that she one. brought me that one, but he was orange. So, I was kind of confused by that. Um, and I just really wish they would release an Aqua Funko Pop. Like, yeah. an Aqua. Xehanort would be cool too, but Aqua's my favorite as well. So I just I've been like waiting for that one forever. And I'm gonna have to actually go uh, get the I don't remember which retailer it was, so I'll probably just grab it online. The Funko of Sora and the uh, dual arrow pistols. That, that it was is, it was GameStop. Yeah, I have that one. I love that's my favorite weapon in the game. That's the one I've spent way more time with than anything. And so I want the pop of him holding the uh, the dual pistols uh because that's my favorite keyblade. I have a Mickey holding that keyblade on top of my NES games over here to <laughs> the left. Like that's always been my favorite keyblade and it was just the best one to me in the game. Uh even though there were some that had actually cooler attacks. The Monsters and- Inc is my second favorite one. And there's actually a Best Buy one where he's got that keyblade and he's got the outfit of his form. Oh. The Best Buy exclusive. He's got the. Okay, it's Shooting Star in KH3, right? right? Okay. I think so, yeah. It, look, it looks like Star Seeker. Or is it Star Seeker? Is that what it is? And then in this one, it's Shooting Star. Either so. way, they look very similar. Uh, it looks very similar to another keyblade that was my favorite. Yep. And so. But I, I really like this one. So it's, it's Sora holding the shooting star in Kingdom Hearts 3, and he's got the blue outfit on, like, in that form. Uh-huh. Then there's the GameStop one, where he's actually got the uh, the pistols, the dual blasters from that. So they actually have both of those that you can, you can get now. That is something that will be on my desk, alongside uh, my little diorama of uh, vinyl figures and the uh, Funkos. I actually took my Star Wars uh, Funkos off my desk for my live streams on Friday and replaced them with Organization 13 Mickey and Sora riding the uh, Sora riding the wave of Heartless over here because I was so excited to do it during Kingdom Hearts week. Uh, so uh, so yeah, um, so we're we're running out of time. We should probably start wrapping up here. And so I wanted to uh, to ask you if there is anything and I will, I'll do my best for spoilers uh, since you haven't gotten terribly like you haven't gotten all the way through the game and so you don't know what happens all the way through but is there anything in particular that you're really looking forward to or hope that happens in this one um let's see no I mean I'm looking forward to I want to see what's going on with Aqua because uh, she is my favorite character and in several of the trailers they've released before the game, we see her with like the yellow Zehanor eyes. And so, which I know had so many people like, what? <laughs> Myself included. I was like, I so, don't want Aqua to be evil. Like, I'm really, uh, I'm really anxious uh, to see her because they haven't shown her yet. They're looking for her, but hasn't shown her. I'm looking forward to that. And then I'm also looking forward to uh, the. So at the beginning of the of the game, which they've shown this in trailers too, is it shows like what's his name, Master Ericus? Yeah, is that right? Yep. It shows him for just a little while playing chess, like it did in the trailers that they've yep. shown before the game. And so I'm interested in seeing that um, to see if he. I don't know if he shows up again or not, but I really liked him in Birth by Sleep. Yep. And so I'm wondering if they're. Uh, I'm wondering how he plays into all of this. Um, can I also just say though, I appreciate the fact that Kingdom Hearts just totally ripped off Lost, and like no one's called him on it yet. They've had like the Man in Black, and like Ericus yep. is ba- basically Jacob, but instead of playing like Mahjong, they're playing chess. Yep, they are talking about good and evil. I mean, it's totally just it was a scene on Lost in like two thousand and like eleven. And uh, yeah, I mean, and that's in the the opening movie of of three, and it's, and, and, uh, and I think it was in the first trailer they released too. Oh, so. was it? Yeah, that's why I was talking about it because I know it's been in trailers, so I didn't. So no, I'm not spoiling if it's anything. In the opening movie, I think that one's fair game as well. Um, and for me, like I was actually disappointed in one thing. Like my favorite thing so far has been that there are times in the game where you get to get control of different characters that uh, that you there for very short periods of time that you're you are playing Sora in this game but there are a couple of times where you get control of other characters and I was disappointed that and and this is 
as much this is not even a story spoiler or anything like that you don't get to control mickey and so i was truly hoping that at some point in this game you would get to control king mickey with a keyblade and i was like, like just hoping against hope and it never happened and so i was i was disappointed in that just having been a nerd like i really just wanted to control mickey mouse um so i'm hoping maybe i'll find a mod somewhere or, or <laughs> something uh but yeah so uh so that was mine uh, i'm looking forward to seeing where everything else goes it's uh but like in terms of the secret ending and how they tie it up so so do you have any closing kingdom hearts 3 uh thoughts any tldrs for people um no not really i think i've talked about everything with the game that i really want to talk about right now i'm sure I'll, i will have a million more things whenever i finish the game but okay. just in terms of actually talking on the podcast today, I think that's pretty much it for me with Kingdom Hearts. All right. Well, you can always contact Austin on Twitter at where? At Austin King Books. Hey. Uh, and then I also I do a Dragon Quest blog now, uh, which is geek2geekmedia.com slash Dragon Quest Austin. Uh, so if you, if you listened to us last week, you heard me talk about Dragon Quest a whole, whole lot. So you should go back and listen to that. That's episode four of season four. Mm -hmm. And uh, still on Dragon Quest VII, which is where I was last week. I'm still still playing it. I'm playing mostly Kingdom Hearts 3 right now. Uh, But Dragon Quest VII is episodic, so I'm still playing that one uh, on the 2DS, as time permits. (laughs) So... uh... So thank you for being here. I really appreciate you filling in for Void while life happens to him. Oh, thank and, you guys. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It has <laughs> been. And so I want to get, let everyone know before we head off of here that you can go to patreon.com slash geek to geekcast if you want to support the podcast. Um, I uh, have a real nice thank you for Sean Flickinger. I'm not sure if that's how you spell your name. You might be Sean Flickinger, 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 as Austin's daughter would say. Flickinger. But thank yeah. you, okay. Sean Flickinger. And uh, you can remember, we're also part of a network where you can uh, listen to whatever is on Geektitude this week. I have not heard about that one or Tea Time with Katie and Chelsea. And you can see Capsule J streaming every Tuesday at 8 to 11 Eastern and Thursdays and weekends, uh, I believe at the same time, and Troidal Power uh, on most weekends, uh, most of the time after dinner. So uh, that has that is who you need to check out. Um, just really quick geekeries, uh, for us. We didn't really touch on anything, uh, last week when we were talking about it, cause we talked for a very long time, even longer than this about Dragon Quest. Uh, but this week for me has been mostly Kingdom Hearts 3. I did buy Wargroove on the Switch because it's a, uh, a successor to Advance Wars. And I loved those games when they were new. I've played like two or three levels on it and it is, uh, it is great and it's exactly what we expected it to be. At least what I expected it to be. So if that's your thing, uh, check it out. I can't wait to play more of it. And uh, when we finish recording this, I bought the new Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe on Switch so that uh, my wife and I can play together. And since I am on anti-anxiety and mood stabilizing medicines now, I think we can play Mario Brothers again. And I won't like nerd rage on my wife and we have to stop playing a Mario game together because I get too angry about it. So I think I'm cool now. So we're going to see how that goes. Uh, but is, or is there any kind of stuff that you've been geeking out this week out about besides uh, Kingdom Hearts 3? Uh, yeah, so in addition to Kingdom Hearts 3, Dragon Quest 7, uh, I got the Final Fantasy Ultimatum Archive mm. Volume 2 book. I love art books. If anybody's listened to this or read my blog or knows me at all, you know I love art books. And so this is that, but it's also, it's got a lot of like, I guess you would call them liner notes mm-hmm. about all kinds of, there's like okay. storyboards though. There's all sorts of stuff. And even, even as being someone who, I, I feel like I know a lot about Final Fantasy and I'm still learning stuff. Like I didn't know Barrett from Final Fantasy VII was originally named Blow huh. for the longest time during production of the of Seven. Nine, which is my favorite video game of all time, and I play it. I played it pretty much every year since like 2000. I actually learned something from this book. I didn't realize that Doctor Tot, the little tutor uh, for for the princess, yeah, is a human. I thought he was an owl. 
because there's bird people in the game. Yeah. And I thought it was a little owl, but it's a human with a long nose. You just can't tell because it's PS1 graphics. Yeah, I thought he was like a bird man. Yeah, I was looking at all the notes for Dr. Tot. He's a, he's a human with a big nose. Wow. He's not his, an owl. His nose is absurd. It shattered my entire world that, that Dr. Tot is not... A, like, I like him less now because he's not an owl. But it... <laughs> That book has been great. Volume 2 is about 7, 8, and 9, which is three of my favorite RPGs and also just my favorite Final Fantasy games. Um, I'm watching the final season of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt right now. Has Super not, have, funny show. Is it good? Is the final season good? They split it up, which I think it's really dumb that Netflix is splitting in half their final seasons lately. Uh -oh. They did the same thing with the rest of development because Netflix is for binging and by doing like six episodes and then seven episodes it's just you get through that in an afternoon yeah. and so this is seven episodes uh, my wife and i've watched three of them so far the first one especially was hilarious it's technically i think episode seven of the final season but the character titus and dramadon who's like her best friend on the show my favorite character on tv maybe ever like i just love him so much um we're also re-watching boy meets world for all that 90s nostalgia nice which is Still, I mean, I know it's a cheesy show, but it's like still so good in a lot of ways. Like, I, I love Boy Meets World, and I'm not gonna apologize for it. <laughs> I love, I love it too. Not quite to the extent that you do, but I've, I've watched a bunch of it on Hulu. Yeah. So that's, uh, so anyway, that's what I've been doing this week. All right. Well, I think that will wrap us up. Uh, if you would like to write to us with comments, suggestions, or any kind of feedback, you can at geek 2 geekcast at gmail.com. You can reach us on Twitter at, at geek 2 geekcast And we have longer discussion threads on subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash geek 2 geekcast And we also have a Slack and Discord at discordgeek 2 geekcastcom and slack.geek2geekcast.com and you can hang out with any of us um, and like we said earlier we're part of a podcast network uh, and media network now so you can go to geek2geekmedia.com to see everything that we've got uh, where can people find you again Austin? Uh, so on Twitter you can follow me at Austin King Books and talk to me about RPGs, Dragon Quest, Star Wars all kinds of fun stuff uh, and then you can also read my Dragon Quest blog, it's a weekly blog and that is geek 2 geekmediacom slash DragonQuestAustin. And I'm on Twitter as at Professor Beige, and I am now blogging a little, I think, at uh, geek 2 geekcast nope, geek 2 geekmediacom slash Professor Beige. Uh, I think I titled it, Beige has something, Beige is excited about something and wants to talk about it, because that's pretty much me. Um, that is, that we have been Austin and Beige, and this has been your geek to geek podcast Bye, everybody. Bye.